Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Here we have a new version of the Forge Guard minion build and this time we look at a potential Warpath version that I got quite a bit of questions about since I posted the last video. I got to almost 250 corruption here uh, before I decided to take a break for the day and figured why not make a quick video about it. I'll leave a T for Yulra in the background here for you to enjoy while I go over some of the changes. And I think I just go over real quick here as I am already have explained most thing about the build in the last video and most of these things are exactly the same as before uh, with some small tweaks here and there and uh, just uh, moved a item or so and we changed out mode strike for warpath and that's basically it. But I'll try to go over as much as I can here and uh, all the changes that I made. So the main reason why the changes here from Moonstrike to Warpath is uh, simply that we can use Warpath to easily run through monoliths a lot faster and progress uh, the early stage of the corruption here as we spawning force weapon roughly every two seconds as we are moving around channeling Warpath and they will just keep spawning and killing everything as we are on the move. And the biggest change is also going to be how you will sustain your health here. When using Mood Strike, we get the, the heal from a Time and Faith passive here, and uh, also we get it from the Healing Hand. That's from this Cleric Hammer here, which will trigger this each time we hit with a melee hit, and this will not trigger when we're using a Warpath. So Warpath won't trigger Healing Hand, but uh, we still want to use this as we get some uh, damage debuffs here to both Void and also to Undead enemies by taking these two nodes here. And we also get some extra health regen here when we use the skill, and it's also going to still be a travel skill basically. We also made some changes to Seal of Hope here. We are picking up the Faith passive here uh, to make the Seal just consume and heal us if we take a bigger hit. And this will help a little bit to sustain our life and staying alive. And we're also picking up X and GC here to make the sigils be instant cast so we don't interrupt Warpath. So basically we do uh, pretty much the same as before. We want to use Force Strike here on the big pass at start to spawn some weapons. And then you can just use the Warpath basically and they respawn every two seconds or so. If you're quick enough they won't even despawn before you go to the next monolith. And uh, then you just want to use your healing hand once in a while to move around and uh, keep pressing your sigils time to time and you should be fine with your mana here uh, if you manage to time them right. And if you feel lazy, a Orion Sun Seal is uh, one of the new unique rings that you can use here. But you will lose around 20 movement speed, which is not a good trade in my opinion. Uh, just for not wanting to press a button each 6 seconds or so. And I'll go over more about that later. But for the rest of the gear, we're still using Aptis more here with the base crit on it as a linear potential. And I've been trying out some other ones, but it seems like this is still the best for the setup we're using right now. What you really want to look for is uh, still going to be a weapon with base crit on it and as much added flat damage as you can. Ideally, you also want to get some crit multiplier as well if possible. Trident of the Lost Abyss was an item recommended by a viewer and uh, was something that I missed in the last video and uh, this looks uh, really good if you manage to get the base crit on it. Could be nice to know that there are other options to use. And of course you have other normal options uh, which I went over in the last video. And for the rest of the units we are still using Death Rattle here and it's going to be for the crit multiplier for minions. Uh, we are seeing uh, Phantom's Grip, which is uh, really good for all minions builds basically that are hit base. And then we are using Code of the Race for plus 1 to skills and damage mitigation for damage over time. Advent of the Race for even more damage mitigation to damage over time. And also the Frenzy and Haste buff that will apply to our uh, minion weapons when we gain the Haste buff. The Kestrel is a really old one which is uh, one also that I've been using as a leveling armor for all my new characters and it's been uh, working out real good. Uh, we get some movement speed here and also the chance to gain haste on hit which also makes us have haste basically all of the time as long as we're hitting a enemy. 
and this also make us gain the benefits from our boots this will basically be up all of the time uh, the less damage over time taken here and also the haste and frenzy for the minions Coronation of Momentum is a new ring that will replace your Evade for a Swiftness buff. And the Swiftness buff gives you 10% move speed and also an extra 0.1 per level. And it's really nice if you want to go fast with its setup. Also even more armor here as well and then all the stats to top it off here. And this is the ring that you want to change uh, to your Orion Sun if you want to use this one instead. But do keep in mind that you will lose roughly around 20 movement speed if you choose to switch out those rings. Wings of Argentus is the body armor that I want to use for this setup, but I've been trying to get one with some health on it so we don't get too low as the other chest that I've shown you here gives quite a bit. Uh, but it works the same basically, we have a uh, chance to gain haste on hit from this and we also get 20% uh, less damage taken while moving which is huge and as we are spinning all of the time this works great for this setup. And we also get plus 2 for fire melee attacks which also applies to forge strike and also to warpath if we pick up earth scorcher here which makes the skill uh, giving the fire tag basically. And for the passes, just some small adjustments here. We remove time and faith if we don't use any of those skills anymore. And we also removed Blade Master. I didn't really think that I would need it anymore. Uh, the only thing this really helps is to uh, attack faster with four strike. So that's basically all that it does right now. So if you still want to hit a little bit faster with that, you can put like five points in free LS and then take five more points here. But what I went and done instead is I went to Paladin and I just put my extra points in Holy Icon here. Get some healing effectiveness, Necrotic Resist which was something I really needed, some health. And then I just put the rest in Dedication here for extra attunement and some mana regen. And attunement is something that's also scaled with your minions, that's really great. And you can also put some points in Void Knight here, Abyssal Endurance gives you health. Void resist and also physical resist if you would need them. We also did one extra change in Forge Guard, and that's going to be one extra point in Infinity Bulwark here. And that's for the, the bonus there, the four point bonus, which uh, makes us 100% uh, of our armor will also heal our minions. And this uh, has been working out really great and was something that I missed out in the last video. This is uh, definitely something that you want to pick up. And it will just help keeping our minions alive. And as for now we are at around 5k here. So that's how much it will heal each time we use a potion. And uh, they also get a increased armor after we use a potion as well. And same for us. And this will last 4 seconds. 80% quite nice for both ourselves and minions. And then for the last change, which is a big one, we changed the blessing from Spirit of Fire timeline to armor when channeling. And you can get up to 650 flat armor from this. And uh, I lost a huge chunk when swapping out my chest piece. So this was quite needed for me uh, to stay to the top side basically. And if you already are close to cap or around 75% armor, then you can just go and pick uh, minion damage here instead. So there we go, I think I went over all the changes that I've been doing for now and I'm going to make it up to the video to the move strike setup once I get a bit higher, corruption and I'm still thinking it's going to be the superior choice of the two at least for the end game. I do have some other things I want to try out as well but that's going to be for another video. Warpath has been uh, quite nice to use uh, at least up to now. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we are at uh, 250 corruption at the moment and uh, it just feels really smooth right now and we'll have to see when we get a little bit higher uh, how it feels then. Tell me in the comments what you like to see, maybe you want a endgame warpath version as well. I put a link to the build planner in the description if you like to check the current setup that I've been using so far. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!